Today, I'm going to show you how to start a new transaction in DocuSign, and I'm going to take you through all of the steps associated with adding documents to your DocuSign room and then sending those documents to your clients. So here we are inside of Command, and we are going to assume that you have already created your contact and then also created your opportunity. So here we are on your main screen for your opportunities. Now for this example, we have an active buyer who we want to add documents to their room. So I'm going to find this opportunity that I'm looking for. Here they are in the showing stage. So I'm going to click on the opportunity, which is going to take me to this details page with some information about the opportunity. Now up on this bar, you're going to click on the documents tab. And then over here in dark blue, you'll see a button that says start a transaction. Once you have started a transaction for this client, when you come back here, it will say go to transaction or something like that. But since this is our first time in here, we're going to click start a transaction. And then if you have both DocuSign and Dot .loop accounts um, linked to your command, you'll see both options pop up. And one important thing to note is that once you select one of these platforms, you won't be able to come back and switch to the other platform for this specific opportunity. So whichever one you choose is the one that you're going to have to use for this opportunity. Um, for this example, we are obviously going to use DocuSign. So we are going to select DocuSign. And I'm going to be prompted to log into DocuSign. So I'll type in my username and my password and log in. Okay, and now here we are inside of your DocuSign rooms. Up here, there is a bar with a few different tabs. There are details, documents, people, envelopes, messages, and history. So what we are going to do is we are going to start in the details tab. Now dot loop had a very similar page to this where you could fill out all the details of your transaction and that is exactly what we are going to do here. Uh, so the most important areas to add information are obviously the room information which that should have been auto populated from command and then the location, this information is required to close. And then also it's important to add the people associated with this transaction, which is gonna be over here on the right hand side. So I'm going to go up here and click this little uh, blue edit button with the pencil so I can start typing in my information about this transaction. I'll start with the location. Okay, so you can go ahead and type in as much information as you have. And then there are other boxes down here with offer details, uh, closing details. So you can fill out as much information as you have. And then as I mentioned, it's important then to go over here on the right hand side and fill out your client's information. So this is a buyer. So we are going to find buyer one all the way down here. And we have our buyer's name, their phone number, and we are going to add their email address. It's important to make sure you have their email address because obviously you will be sending them documents through DocuSign to that email address. So you can fill out buyer one. If there's a buyer two, you can fill out that information. And then you will be the buyer agent in this example, so you'll see that your information should have auto-populated down here. Okay, so that looks good for now. So we're going to go ahead and click Save. And the room details have been updated. Uh, one other thing I did want to note is that it's important to add your um, 
client's information on the details page versus the people page. We just prefer this because if you add your client's information on the people page, they're going to receive an email notifying them that they've been added to a DocuSign room. And there may or may not be any documents for them to sign right away if you're just creating this room. So it seems kind of like an unnecessary notification for them to receive. Whereas if you add their information on this details page, it'll still auto-populate onto the documents, but they won't receive that email message, which is kind of nice. So important to remember that as well. Okay, so now we're going to go over and click on the Documents tab. Now this is where you can add all of your documents to your room. So we're going to go ahead and click this blue Add button. And you'll see that you have the option to add documents from your computer. You can pull some PDFs in. Um, DocuSign forms, Zip forms, Dropbox, Google Drive, any way you can think of to add documents, there's pretty much an option for that. Um, so we're going to show you how to add DocuSign forms though to this room. And you'll see that there are two options here. There's a DocuSign forms library and a DocuSign forms group. Now the library if you go ahead and then select a library, you'll click on our Market Center, number 297, and you'll see all of our documents in here, the same ones that we had in .loop. Um, there's even a little forms finder up here, so if you're looking for something in particular, you can just start typing it in, like a mutual release, and that'll pop right up, and you should be able to click whatever you need. Um, and then if you will go down to the DocuSign Forms group, you'll see that we have listing packets and sales packets already created. So for this example, let's click on sales packet. And all of the documents you may need when you're writing up an offer would be in here. So I'm just going to select all and add all of these documents into my room. May take a second for all of them to get in here. And then from here, you can just go ahead and click on your forms and start editing them. So let's look over here at the offer to purchase, for example. We'll click on this form. Here is our offer, and you'll see that some of the information from the details tab has auto-populated. And then you can just go ahead and start editing this document. All the fields um, are editable. You can go ahead and type in a permanent parcel number, anything that you need to go ahead and do. The checkboxes are all working. You can type. So I would go ahead and just Fill everything out as you normally would. And I'm not going to go through each and every document, but you get the idea that you can edit these forms essentially the same way you were able to edit in dot loop for the most part. One thing you will notice in DocuSign that differs from dot loop is that your um, signature fields are not visible at this point in time. Um, once we get to the envelope stage, you'll see where that comes into play. But for now, don't panic that there aren't any signature boxes yet. So you can go ahead, fill this out in its entirety, and then click Save and Close. Just like you did in .loop, you always have to save your changes before you close out a document. So you have the capability to edit all of these documents that have been added. Um, one thing you may notice is there doesn't appear to be a way to rearrange these documents within this tab, within the Documents tab, um, but don't worry because once you get into the Envelopes tab, you'll see there is a way to be able to rearrange these documents before you send them to your clients so they're not seeing a walkthrough addendum before they see the offer to purchase. Okay. So from here, I've, let's assume I filled out all of my documents and I want to send all of these to my client for her, for her signature. So I'm going to click select all. 
When you do that, a few options are going to pop up here. You'll see you can copy these documents, you can move them to a different room, just like you were able to do in dot loop, you could move them to a different loop. Um, you can email them, combine them if you have PDFs, DocuSign them, archive them, unarchive them. So what we want to do now, since we want our client to sign them, is we're going to click the DocuSign button. Okay, this is going to take us to the envelope tab and we are in the envelope details. Now what you can do here is you can change the envelope name to whatever you'd like to have it. Property address maybe, 123 Main Street, however you'd like to address it. There is, once you get to this envelope tab, you can also add any other documents from your room that you may have forgotten, just click there. Or you could also click use a template. This is where you would add any specific templated documents that you have, um, be it an ABA that you have with a title company. Um, there will be an additional video to follow to show you exactly how to add those templates to DocuSign and then add them to your envelope. So look, keep a lookout for that as well. So now we need to add a recipient to our envelope. This is the person that we want to send these documents to. So we are going to click Add Recipient. And then if you just click Pre-Tagged Roles, since we already added our buyer's information under Buyer 1, we should be able to click Buyer 1, check that off, and then select. And there's our buyer right there. So. You should be able to do that with all of the clients you have. If you have buyer two and you had somebody else there and you had already typed their information in on the details page, they should pop up as an available recipient. Same thing with if you wanted to send these documents to the listing agent, um, you'd be able to, to check off that person and then select them from here. So I have added my buyer as a recipient, so I'm going to click Add Selected. and she needs to sign. So we are going to keep that as is. You can also change that to needs to view, receive a copy. So we are gonna keep that as needs to sign. And then this is the email subject that they're going to receive. So you can change that to whatever you'd like as well. Please DocuSign 4123 Main Street. And then this is your message in the, in the email that they're going to receive. So you can say, hey Julia, Please review and sign the enclosed document at your convenience. So this is, you'll see that that's pretty similar to how dot loop was as well. You could change, you could write a little message to your client, whatever you needed to do there. So as long as that all looks good, we are going to hit next. Okay, and this is where you'll see that the signature fields come into play on all of your documents. Um, so you can go through and check and make sure everything's been filled out appropriately. Now your buyer signatures should automatically pop up in the correct places, um, but if for some reason they're in a bad spot or you don't want them there, um, you can delete and then that is gone if you just click on it. Um, if there is anything additional that you wanted to add to these documents, oh, there's not a signature field here, so we'll click Signature and make sure that they're going to be signing that and adding a date signed. So as I was saying, if there's anything additional that you wanted to add to these documents, that you did not add while you were in your um, Documents tab. For example, let's scroll down and get to this, the offer. 
let's say maybe there wasn't enough room in the text box provided um, for you to type in also included features, um, now is your time to do that. So you can go in and look over here on these standard fields on the left hand side of the page and you can insert anything that you need. So a text box, you can insert that and start typing, you know, hot tub, whatever else it might be included, whatever you need to include there. Um, check boxes, you can add those from here. Um, drop downs, radio buttons. Um, this is kind of a cool feature. You can add a note so only your client sees it. You can just say, as discussed, we are offering 200,000, whatever you want to add there to your client if you want to clarify something. I think that's kind of a neat feature that they only see that note. And then once your client signs and you download this document as a PDF, that note is not visible anymore. So something to keep in mind there. Okay, so let's assume that all of your documents look good, the signature box is auto-populated properly, you have all of your documents filled out, nothing extra to add. Um, you can click on this recipient preview to see how your client is going to view these documents. And you can also click and see how they'll see it if they look at it on a computer, on a tablet, or on their phone. Also kind of neat. And you can check down, it, there'll be a drop down menu if you're going to be sending to multiple people so you can see how each of those people is going to view the documents. Also kind of neat. Um, so we can exit out of this and if everything looks good, you're going to go ahead and click send. And that's going to send those documents to your client. And as I mentioned, they, these may not be in the correct order, but you are, are able to go ahead and change those in that main envelope page um, if, if need be. So I hope this is helpful to get you started in terms of getting into DocuSign, adding documents, you know, filling them out, and then making sure that you're sending them to your clients with the proper fields filled in.